Director and an Associate Program Director for the General Surgery Resident. surgical oncologist and leads the Lobular Breast Cancer Research Program at UCSF. Her research is funded by the National Cancer Institute and focuses on surgical outcomes and predictors in response to therapy and invasive lobular cancer. Welcome. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Valente, Dr. Cruz, um, and the organizers for inviting me to speak. Um, those talks were amazing. I'm, I'm really feeling like the simple surgeon coming to um, talk about something not so quite, not quite as complex. But I think that it was very thoughtful of the organizers to um, put a talk on imaging and pathology before the talk on surgical management because some of what you guys have heard already really impacts the way that we are able to treat patients surgically with lobular breast cancer in terms of its diffuse growth pattern and the way that it looks on imaging. So surgeons are often um, operating on these patients a little bit blind, uh, not knowing exactly what we're going to find. And, and um, as you'll see, that definitely impacts outcomes. So as mentioned, I will be talking about surgical outcomes for patients with invasive lobular carcinoma. Um, I will touch on the role of preoperative imaging to help guide the surgical management with the focus on breast MRI. And then I will talk about some of the data that we have accumulated at uh, UCSF, looking at different surgical techniques and approaches specifically in patients with um, ILC. So there are many papers showing that patients with lobular breast cancer have worse surgical outcomes compared to patients with invasive ductal carcinoma. And these worse surgical outcomes include things like higher rates of positive margins, higher rates of mastectomies, and higher rates of axillary dissection. And this is probably caused um, by several reasons. So one, patients with lobular breast cancer are diagnosed at more advanced stages. And this likely reflects the lower sensitivity of screening mammography. So patients with ILC end up needing more extensive surgery. There's also a very high discordance between clinical stage and pathologic stage. So we think that patients might have stage one or two disease. We operate, we find that the tumor was larger than expected on imaging, or there were more positive nodes than expected. And this also has implications for the surgical outcomes. And this ties back to the lower sensitivity of standard imaging tools, such as mammography and ultrasound. So we'll focus on this problem of positive margins. Um, many series show that lobular breast cancer patients have higher rates of positive margins than ductal breast cancer patients. This has been known for decades, and some of the older series are published here comparing uh, positive margin rates after breast conserving surgery between ILC and invasive ductal cancer. And there's quite a range in the literature, but they're all very consistent that the, the rates are higher in lobular than ductal. Um, I would say that the more modern series, some show positive margin rates as low as five to 10% for lobular cancer. The majority are probably in the 30 to 40% range. Some are even as high as 60%. And having a positive margin has a significant impact on patients. So positive margins need to be treated with additional surgery, so either re-excision or a completion mastectomy if someone has previously had breast conserving surgery. This can delay moving on to the next steps of adjuvant therapy. It's also associated with worse patient reported outcomes, so lower breast satisfaction and sexual well-being at two years after surgery amongst those who require re-excision. Also, that second operation confers higher complication rates, such as surgical site infections, higher incidence of seroma, hematoma, and fat necrosis. And there's considerable healthcare costs associated with going back to the operating room for a second operation. So should we recommend more mastectomies for patients with lobular breast cancer who already have higher mastectomy rates than patients with ductal breast cancer? And I would say not necessarily. And this is really based on the fact that there are plentiful data from very, very large series in this country and other countries showing that patients who have breast conserving therapy, so lumpectomy and radiation, have equivalent or even better overall survival than patients who have mastectomy. Additionally, the management of the breast and axilla are linked. So there are other options for managing a positive node if a patient has had a lumpectomy. If a patient has had a mastectomy and ends up having a positive node, that patient now might be forced to have an axillary dissection or have post-mastectomy radiation, which has implications for any reconstructive procedures that the patient may have. And we, we will be hearing much more about this later. <clears throat> 
And patients with lobular breast cancer are indeed more likely to have such positive nodes. So in a large series, um, actually here from the Cleveland Clinic, um, in 692 patients with ILC, 35% were node positive. And importantly, of those who were clinically node negative, when they went to the operating room, about a quarter were found to be node positive, so unexpectedly upstage. And other series also confirm a much higher likelihood of being upstage for lobular patients compared to those with ductal. So I really wanted to focus on some specific questions. First, I'm going to review some of the literature on whether or not we should routinely obtain breast MRI in the preoperative evaluation of patients with ILC. And I should say that in my own practice, I do always obtain a breast MRI uh, before operating, uh, but this was a good opportunity for me to review some of the literature in this, on this uh, question. I also wanted to ask, are there surgical approaches to reduce positive margin rates? If a positive margin occurs, what is the chance of success for re-excision as opposed to going back and doing a completion mastectomy? If you have a positive margin after a mastectomy in ILC, how should you manage it? And is nipple sparing mastectomy safe in ILC? So for these last four questions, there are data for breast cancer in general, but very little data in the literature looking at ILC specifically, which as we have seen is quite different from invasive ductal cancer. And these are questions that really came up in my own surgical practice where I have a very high proportion of patients with lobular cancer. And so I'll show you some of the data that, that we found uh, to try to answer those questions. So should we routinely obtain breast MRI in the preoperative evaluation of patients with ILC? And the goal would be, of course, to reduce positive margin rates. And the answer, I think, is yes, probably. The probably is because the data are primarily from single institution retrospective series with mixed results. There are data showing that breast MRI has higher concordance with pathology size than conventional imaging. So this is a bland element plot looking at um, the tumor size on pathology on the x-axis here, and then here on the y-axis is the difference in size um, between conventional imaging, so mammography and ultrasound compared to pathology. So you can see that for lobular tumors that are smaller than two centimeters in size, the difference in size on mammogram and ultrasound is not that, not that large, so you know, maybe around a, a centimeter or less, so pretty good concordance. But as these tumors get larger, you can see that conventional imaging significantly underestimates uh, the true size of the tumor. So uh, if someone is going into the operating room where the imaging is showing that the tumor is one centimeter in size, and in fact it's five centimeters in size, for sure that patient's going to end up having a positive margin and have to have a second operation. In contrast, this is showing the concordance between MRI longest diameter and pathology size. And you can see that um, MRI has much higher concordance, but there are still patients where the tumor size is significantly underestimated and cases where the tumor size is significantly overestimated. And the accuracy of these imaging studies also relates to the phenotype of the tumor on imaging. So on MRI, some tumors may appear as a mass, whereas others might appear as a more diffuse process, which is known as non-mass enhancement. And these red and blue dots are indicating that. So for tumors that appear as a solid mass on MRI, you can pretty much trust that the MRI is going to be accurate, whereas for tumors that appear as non-mass enhancement, you often don't know if the tumor is actually larger or smaller than what the imaging shows. So this table summarizes several of the series that have compared patients with lobular cancer who had preoperative breast MRI and didn't have preoperative breast MRI, and then looked at things such as uh, mastectomy rates and positive margin rates. And you can see that there's actually um, quite a lot of variability with some of the studies showing that those who get breast MRI have lower positive margin rates, others showing that there is no difference in positive margin rates. There's some concern that obtaining a preoperative breast MRI will lead to unnecessary biopsies and then push people into having mastectomies, which may not end up impacting the recurrence rates or overall survival. And then a large meta-analysis ended up showing no difference in mastectomy rates and no difference in re-excision rates between getting a breast MRI and not getting a breast MRI. So because of this, there is some controversy about whether or not we should be recommending breast MRI. However, despite the lack of a consistent or clear benefit in the literature, breast MRI is still recommended in the preoperative evaluation by many organizations, such as those listed here. <clears throat> 
And some of the challenges that we have with proving whether or not breast MRI is useful is that there is a lack of prospective data. So all of these series are going to be subject to selection bias. So breast MRI is probably going to be used more often in patients where it's harder to actually figure out what size the tumor is. So the conventional imaging is perhaps less clear or discordant with physical exam. So that's going to bias the results against breast MRI. And there's also a lack of a better alternative. So at this point, for the preoperative imaging of lobular breast cancer, I would say that MRI is still the best tool that we have. So if someone, has a, if someone is going to the operating room, is there anything that we can do as surgeons to reduce the chance of, of having a positive margin? So we looked at our institutional data of patients who attempted breast conservation with lobular breast cancer, and we looked specifically at whether or not they had oncoplastic surgery at the same time as their lumpectomy, and whether or not they had shave margins taken. And at my institution, these shave margins are done selectively. We found that uh, we had 277 patients who had lumpectomy with no oncoplastic surgery. 39 had a lumpectomy with level one oncoplastic surgery, which is a local tissue rearrangement. And 49 had a lumpectomy with a um, level two oncoplastic surgery, which at our institution is typically an oncoplastic reduction mammoplasty. And you can see here the positive margin rate was the highest for those who had lumpectomy alone, which was 46%, um, and then 31% and 37% for patients who had some form of oncoplastic surgery. The overall positive margin rate in this series was 43%. The overall rate of successful breast conservation was 75%, although about a third of patients did require a re-excision, and then a small number of patients required two re-excisions to achieve successful breast conservation. In a multivariate model where we adjusted for tumor size and tumor multifocality, we still saw that obtaining shave margins was associated with a significantly lower rate of positive margin, and oncoplastic surgery was also associated with a significantly lower rate of positive margin. And these results are consistent with trials of shave margins for breast cancer in general, which have been shown to reduce positive margin rates. And a large retrospective series in the Kaiser system also showed that oncoplastic surgery was associated with lower positive margin rates, specifically in lobular breast cancer. And we'll be hearing more about this from Dr. Brunelli later today. So if a patient has a lumpectomy and has a positive margin, what is the chance of success for re-excision? And this question actually came up at our tumor board where you know, we had a patient with a positive margin and someone at the tumor board said, well, they just need to have a mastectomy because they're not gonna get negative margins with a re-excision. Um, and there really wasn't any data in the literature to support whether or not we should try a re-excision or whether we should tell the patient th that they needed to have a mastectomy. So we again went back to our institutional um, data to look at this. And we found that there is actually a 74% chance of success for clearing a positive margin at re-excision instead of doing a completion mastectomy. It's not a 100% chance, but this is still important information for patients to be able to make um, a decision about what they want to do. So for this analysis, we had 314 cases of patients with ILC who had lumpectomy. 37% of them had positive margins. 62 had a re-excision with many of the remaining patients opting for a completion mastectomy. And then 74.2% were successful, meaning that that re excise margin was negative. We found that um, patients who had a successful re-excision did tend to be older than patients who had an unsuccessful re-excision. We also found that those with a successful re-excision were less likely to be node positive. The factors that were not associated with success or failure of re-excision were menopausal status, receptor subtype, grade, lymphovascular invasion, the presence of LCIS, pleomorphic subtype, and interestingly, tumor size. So thus far, we have been focused on positive margins after lumpectomy, but lobular tumors often present at very advanced stages and, as we have seen, have a very diffuse growth pattern. So there's also a question about the positive margin rate after mastectomy. For breast cancer in general, mastectomy is thought to have a very low positive margin rate, so usually less than 5% in the literature. We looked at our patients who had mastectomy, and we actually found that there were very high positive margin rates, especially for patients who had T3 tumors, so larger than five centimeters in size. So 18.7% positive margin rate, which is higher than expected. The location of the positive margins are listed here, with most of them being anterior. <laughs> 
So if someone has a mastectomy for lobular breast cancer and they have a positive margin, the question then becomes, what should you do about that positive margin? Should you do nothing and say this patient is going to be on endocrine therapy and maybe that's going to help control the disease? Or should you re-excise a rim of tissue? Um, or should you do radiation? Or should you do both? We tried to answer this question. Um, unfortunately, the numbers are quite small, but what we were able to do was look at patients with a positive margin after mastectomy and group them into people who had no further local therapy versus some type of local therapy, either re-excision, radiation, or both. And this is showing um, disease-free survival. And we can see that in this top line here, the patients who opted to do some further therapy had significantly better disease-free survival compared to the patients who had no additional local therapy. So while we can't uh, discern whether or not you should do a re-excision or radiation or both, doing at least one of those things I think is important for a positive margin after a mastectomy. That led to the final question that I'll address. So if mastectomy for large lo lobular cancers has high positive margin rates, and some of these are anterior margins, should we be doing nipple sparing mastectomies in ILC? And again, this is a, another question with very little data in the literature. Um, in our series, we actually found that there was no difference in the rate of positive margin between patients who had nipple sparing mastectomy, skin sparing mastectomy, and simple mastectomy. So this was quite reassuring. We also looked at the difference in outcomes in terms of local recurrence-free survival um, by the three different types of mastectomy. Um, this TSSM is a nipple sparing mastectomy, which at my institution we call total skin sparing. Um, so no difference between the nipple sparing, skin sparing, and simple mastectomy in terms of local recurrence-free survival. So in conclusion, what we have seen is that patients with lobular breast cancer have higher than expected positive margin rates after both lumpectomy and mastectomy. So for patients who are having a lumpectomy, I would always take shave margins and offer an aquaplastic operation. It's important to know that re-excision for positive margins have a 74% success rate. For patients who undergo mastectomy, nipple sparing mastectomy appears to be safe in ILC. However, even mastectomy has a very high positive margin rate, especially for those with T3 tumors. And these positive margins need to be addressed with additional local therapy, either re-excision, radiation, or perhaps both. And we should keep in mind that when planning our operation, a preoperative MRI um, is a useful but imperfect test, so we need to interpret that with a grain of salt. And although we didn't talk about this, I would say that these high positive margin rates for the very large lobular cancers where patients are undergoing mastectomy really raise the question of the potential role of neoadjuvant therapy even if a mastectomy is planned. Thank you so much.